this is one of the things that grieved the heart of God. It says in Psalm 78, 41, we shared this uh, last time I spoke on this, and that is that how the children of Israel, they tempted God, and how did they tempt him? They limited him. They limited God. Don't limit God. Tell your neighbors, take the limits off of God. Don't limit God. Look to him. He's the author. He's the finisher of your faith. He wants to do great things. That word limit means to grieve. Uh, it, means, it doesn't mean they limited him one time. It meant they lived a life of limiting God. You know, they just, can God do this and can God do that? And see, God didn't want them to have a mentality of can God do this. God wanted them to have a mentality of God's going to do this. God's going to do this. He's, going, he's taking you out of bondage into a promised land. A place where, where everything you put your hands to is going to prosper. A place where it says, I'm going to give you power to get wealth. I'm going to empower you so that when you, you are where I've called you to be and, and, and you're in the place that I've called you to be in, I'm going to bless you there. I'm going to empower you to prosper in that area. The 1828 Westford Dictionary says they restrained God. I'm not going to restrain God. How about you? Amen. I'm just going to cut him loose. You know, I'm going to take that Clint Eastwood spirit. Make my day, God. Come on, make my day. Come on, let me see what you can do. Come on, let me see the blessings of the Lord. Amen. So they restrained God from doing more, not because it was a one-time thing, but it was a, it was a mentality. Well, some of the sentiments for limited is to diminish, insufficient, minimal, narrow, poor, reduced, restricted, and small. So I guess that goes along with the word that God's given us. Don't stop dreaming, but begin to dream bigger this year. Don't limit. How do you expand your faith for the vision? First of all, you need to forget those things that have hindered you in the past. A lot of times we begin to accept certain things in our lives. You know, one of the things that my wife corrected me on one time, I was... I was dealing with some type of challenge in my body, and she said, don't claim it. I'd say, well, I've got this going on. It's, it, it's, it's, it's my injury. It's my infirmity. She said, don't claim it as yours. Call it a infirmity that God's already healed you of. And so many times we get that mentality accidentally. We begin to think, you know, well, you know, this is the way I am and I'm going to be this way for the rest of my life. Well, I want to tell you, I, I, I have to, I've been thinking about this and I'm not here to put Jordan on the spot, even though God's already spotlighted her today. But you had some type of digestive issue when you were a child. What was it called? Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease. And she heard that the word, by, through the word of God, that God wanted her healed. And the very first day that you heard that God wanted you healed, did you get healed? Are you healed now? Do you have any side effects from it at all? Absolutely not. And medical science says that's impossible. You're going to have this with your, for the rest of your life. I remember seeing her when she was a, a young lady of 14, 15 years old. We went to the hospital to pray for her. And the doctor said, you're going to have this for the rest of your life. She had to refuse that. She had to tell herself, that's not me. That's not who I'm going to be. I'm going to receive my healing. And one day, the healing manifested. Well, the same thing's true. You know, you got to take hold of what God's done and doing and forget those things which are behind you. You need to praise God for your future, for God has a future for you. 2 Peter 1.3 says, according to his divine power, he has already given you all things he has already done it it's already done god's done these things god's got some great and wonderful things for you so forget what has hindered you from getting you uh, stopping you from where you're at now and begin to press in that's one thing paul said one thing i do i forget those things which are behind and i press to obtain that which christ obtained for me. So enlarge your thinking. Isaiah 43, 18. Go there with me. It says, do not remember the former things, nor consider things of old. Well, if it wasn't for this, well, if it wasn't for that. You know, I, I heard a story. My, my great-great-grandfather came over here to America from Germany and uh, when he was 12 years old. 
and he became a contractor. Not only was he a carpenter, but he was a contractor. And actually, from what I understand, he was the chief contractor of the St. Louis Fair in 1904, when it opened up in 1904. That was, that was him. And he became a very, very rich man, very, very wealthy man, very extremely wealthy. But then his children, when he died because he didn't have a will, they all fought over the money, and, and most of them didn't get most of the money. The courts got most of the money, you know. And I can sit there and say, now, you know what? I could have been rich if it wasn't for my grandfather. You know, those knuckleheads, if they would have just, just, you know, said, hey, let's divide it up evenly. But no, no, somebody got greedy there. I could have been rich. No, I got to forget those things. I got to let those things go because I serve a God who can do much more than what he did for my great, great grandfather. Come on, somebody. You know, I can't sit there and blame somebody else for why I'm not what I am today. You know, the only person I can only blame for where I'm at today is me. Hello, somebody. Most of us don't want to look in the mirror and say it's your fault. Hello, somebody. But at least you can blame somebody when you look in the mirror. It's your fault. We all want to point our finger at someone, don't we? It's your fault. Just look in the mirror and it's your fault. At least you get to point your finger at somebody, right? Anyway, we, sometimes we feel good about pointing our finger at other people, but we, we shouldn't. We're where we're at today because of the decisions we made yesterday. And when we make better choices and God's choices, we're going to see God's results in our lives. Can I hear an amen in this house? So enlarge your thinking. That's what Isaiah 54 two says. I'm going to read it out of the Message Bible. Clear lots of ground for your tents. Make your tents large. Spread out. Think big. Use plenty of rope. Drive the tent pegs deep. You're going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family. You're going to take over whole nations. You're going to resettle abandoned cities. Don't be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed. And do not hold back, for you are not going to come short. Now, there's something in here that I really believe that most of us need to get hold of. And that is this. It says right here. Don't be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed. Don't hold back. And you're not going to come short. I was reading Mark 10 30. Jesus said that when you give in this life, you'll receive a hundredfold. But then there's those two little words right after that. It says, with persecutions. With persecutions. Now, there was, a, there was a time in our lives, and I believe we're back in that particular situation. Boy, I tell you what, the favor of God, God baptized me in His favor. There was so much favor in our lives. It was like there, was, there wasn't anything that we couldn't do. I mean, it was like we couldn't do anything wrong. You know, things went well, started the church, you know, had this, had this building provided for us and, and uh, just supernatural things that God did, just incredible, wonderful things that God did for us. And then I started receiving some negative talk. And Vicki and I were blessed, this blessed we'd ever been in our whole marriage, bought a new house, and people started complaining. People, people start griping about us prospering. And so I backed off of talking about what the blessing of the Lord and the favor of God. And guess what happened to it? It kind of seemed to diminish. And I was praying one day, I said, Lord, what, 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 what's going on here? He said, uh, why aren't you talking about the favor that I've given you? Why aren't you talking about the blessing of the Lord? Well, because there's people who, who are complaining about it. Oh, they're persecuting you. Oh, yeah, I get it. Is that why you should stop? No. Why should I be ashamed of the blessing of the Lord? Come on, somebody. Why should I be ashamed of what God's done in my life? You know, because it's a testimony. If God can do it for us, He can do it for you. When we first started this thing, when Vicki and I first started this thing, and, and she's shared her testimony many times, but, you know, we met in Bible school, and I'd never been married before, and she was married. I, we found this out when we met in Bible school. She was married, had two children. And so when God put us together, I mean, we, we didn't have a whole lot to, 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 to show forth. You know, I, we were young, and uh, we didn't have a whole lot. She didn't have a car. I had to help her with a car. And, and uh, you know, and she was barely making it from paycheck to paycheck. And uh, same here. I was barely making it. We got married. You know, we had a couple of debts. I think I had more debt than she did. But we had a couple of debts, you know, and that was hindering us. And so we paid those debts off. And so whenever, whenever we began to serve God, one thing we did do, we tithe. But we didn't have a whole lot. And we had to trust God. 
You know, we went through some canceled checks a few years ago, and there was a check in there given to the church for $1.50. I think it cost them more to have it processed than it did for us to give an offering of $1.50. You know, that was several years ago. But we started somewhere. We began to believe God. We began to trust God. We didn't have a whole lot. Our vehicles were wore out. I drove a 1973 Porsche that sometimes wouldn't start, you know. But uh, my, my, my day view was, I'm driving a Porsche. Didn't start most of the time, but I drove it <laughs> when it started, you know. And so it, it was, it needed a lot of work. And, and her car, it was you know, in the shop more than it was out of the shop. And finally, what did you do with that car? I don't even know whatever happened to that car. That'll be, it died. It died. We don't know where it's at. It went to the great graveyard and the other places that cars go to when they die. But anyway, but we didn't have a whole lot going for us. But we had faith in God. And we kept on hearing the word. And we kept on trusting this word. And we kept on believing this word. And we kept on believing, you know, if God can do it for others, God can do it for us. You know, and so God did do that. God did begin to bless us. God did begin to increase us. Didn't happen overnight, but it happened. And so when people see where we're at today, they think, you know, well, yeah, you, you know, God's really blessed you. And we're not by any means multimillionaires yet. Okay, but we're blessed. God's blessed us. And people started cry, uh, complaining about that, persecuting us. Well, all you do is talk about money. Well, I, I, you know, I, I talk more about more other things, you know, Kansas City won last night. I talk about things like that. Come on, somebody help me. I mean, I talk about other things, you know, but nevertheless, you know, they became critical and I backed off and I saw this scripture. Don't be embarrassed by the goodness of God. Amen. The favor of God's on our life. The favor of God's on our life. We were doing a minister's conference over in Switzerland for some missionaries, a missionaries conference over there. And I was talking to all the ministers, you know, all oh, the favor of God that's on our life. Talking about the favor of God, you know. You know, the more you talk about it, the more it manifests. Come on, somebody. Amen. Whatever you talk about the most will manifest. Did you notice that? That's how you magnify the Lord, by talking about Him so much. Talking about His Word, speaking His Word all the time. Whatever you talk about the most will be magnified in your life. And I was just talking about the favor of God with these ministers, how God's favor is on our, our lives, and, and thanking God for it. And I found out at the very end of the trip, one of the ministers got very upset with me about talking about the favor of God. And so we were going back to, uh, to the hotel to catch our flights the very next day, and all of us were going together. And so I found out that all of them were staying in a, a different hotel than I was. And I said, well, instead of you all dropping me off here and it being so inconvenient on the other side of town, why don't I just call them and cancel my reservations? Well, they'll, they'll, there'll be a penalty. I said, no, there won't. They said, well, how do you know there's going to be a penalty? I said, well, I got favor. So I called up that hotel I was staying in, and I said, hey, can I cancel my reservation? They said, sure. I said, would you not charge me the penalty? They said, yeah, we'll waive it for you. Don't worry about it. Then they said, well, okay, that's fine, but there's not any rooms in the hotel we're staying at. I said, I got a favor. There's going to be a room for me. And they're like, okay. So we get to the hotel, we walk up, and everybody's walking up. And I said, you all have a room here for us? And they said, we got one other room for it. I said, what's the best price you can give me? So I'm expecting the best. Well, well, we can do it for $99. Finally, that minister hit me on the shoulder. You know, one of those kind of, I want your attention hit. I mean, he didn't slug me or anything. He felt like slugging me, but he didn't. Anyway, he said, look, he said, you must have the favor of God. Every time you talk about the favor, it, it irritated me. You know, he said, but my gosh, he said, not only did you get your room canceled and, and they didn't charge anything, he said, but you got a room when there was no room and they gave you a better rate than they gave me. That's the favor of God. Amen. I talk about that favor. I live that favor. I walk in that favor. And I'm not ashamed of that favor. You know, if God's going to do something, he's going to do it for me because I'm his favor right. Amen. And this is one of the things that you've got to do. You've got to forget why things didn't happen. And begin to look to God and have God help you expand your understanding of what God wants to do for your life. So the last thing I shared uh, and, and seeing your vision come to pass was stand on the Word. Stand on the Word of God. Find a scripture for your vision. 
Find a word for your vision. One of the things that God gave my wife when we first moved up here, when we left Fort Worth, we gave all our furniture away because we didn't have any place to stay here in Columbia. My first year, we stayed with my parents who lived an hour from here, so I couldn't move all my furniture into that. The second place we stayed in was a 800 square foot apartment, which was very, very nice and a very lux- a luxurious place. It was wonderful, but we didn't, ha- we didn't have any room for our furniture, so we gave all our furniture away. So when we did buy a house here in Columbia, we didn't have any furniture, but my wife was standing on a scripture. He fills my house with good things. He fills my house with good things. He fills my house with good things. That's what she was standing on. And so we went and, and, and she, she was learning Columbia and she, she, she drove to the certain area of Columbia and saw a furniture store she never knew was there. Is that right? let me lie now you won't let me lie but anyway so she runs she 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 comes in this furniture and they're having a sale it's nice furniture and they're having a sale and and so she she goes in and she bought some nice furniture but when we went back to pick up some other furniture we had told the the salesperson well i'd really like to have you know a couple of these other things and she said well an angel came here we're like really they said yeah they paid for all this other furniture that you'd like to have too I mean, we got a house full of furniture, didn't we? God blessed us because she had a word from the Lord and said, I'm going to stand on this word and I'm going to see God fill my house with good things. So get a word for your vision. Amen. How to see your vision manifest. Number one, stay in faith. That's the most important thing because once you get this vision from God, guess who doesn't want you to have it fulfilled in your life? The devil doesn't. But we say around here, there's no man, no devil, and no government that can stop God's plan for your life. And there is no man. And there is no devil. When God says, I'm going to do this, he's going to do it. In fact, chances are when God says, I'm going to do this thing, it's already been done in his mind. He's just waiting for you to receive it. He's waiting for you to believe him for it so it can manifest in your life. So Stand in faith. Stay in faith. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 says it this way. Therefore, do not cast away. Don't cast away your confidence. Now, when you read that, what you're going to find out is that as you read before that, he's saying, you remember when you first got saved and you had faith? You were persecuted. You were challenged. And you just, you know, you, you even got beat up for your faith, but you just kept on pursuing God. And look what God's done for you. Listen, don't cast away your faith. If God got you through that, how much more will he get you through? If God can bless you, then how much more can he bless you now? Amen? God can do some great things for you. Don't cast away your confidence. Just because things haven't happened the way you thought they should happen by now, it's still in motion. Tell your neighbor, my miracle's in motion. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has a great reward. Don't cast it away. There's a great reward that God has for you. You have need of endurance so that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. So the key is keep doing the will of God. What has God called you to do last? Keep doing what God's called you to do last. Don't ask God to do a new thing until you finish the last thing he's called you to do. (coughs) That wouldn't be practical. Why would God stop you from doing something that's unfinished to start something else? He wants to finish that work he started in you. That's why the Bible says he is well able to complete that work that he started in you. He's well able. He wants to finish that work that he started into you. And so it says, it says here in Hebrews chapter 10, verse, verse 35, don't cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you've done the will of God, that you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, he who is coming will come, I will not tarry, but the just shall live by faith. We are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. The Message Bible says it like this. So don't throw it all away now. You were sure of yourselves then, and it's a sure thing now. It's still a sure thing, but you need to stick it out. Staying with God's plan so you'll be there for the, the promised completion. It won't be long now. He's on the way. He'll show up almost any minute now. But anyone who is right with me thrives on loyal trust. If he cuts and runs, I won't be very happy. But we're not quitters who lose out. Oh, no, we'll stay with it and survive trusting 
all the way. See, quitting's not an option. Keep believing God. Keep trusting God. He wants to do some great things, and He wants to use you to do these great things in our lives and manifest those things in your lives. Number two, don't allow distractions. Num- number one, stay in faith. Don't allow anything to distract you from this vision. What is God putting in your heart? What is God showing you? Don't allow anything. Well, you know, Pastor, you know, I've been praying for someone to get healed, but it looks worse. Don't allow that to distract you. Come on. There were times that Jordan was believing God for her healing, but there were times she was put back in the hospital. We wouldn't let that distract us. Jordan, you're healed. The Word of God says you're healed. We're not letting any setbacks distract us. We're standing on the Word of God. Don't allow any distractions to come into your life. Isaiah 41.10 says it like this. Fear not, for I'm with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and yes, I will help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Now that word dismayed means to be distracted. That's exactly what it means. Don't be distracted. Don't let anything get you, get you off focus of what God's doing in your life. And there's a lot of things that can distract you. I'm not against looking at the news, but don't let the news distract you from God's plan for your life. I'm not distracted from reading current events, but don't let what current events are going on in this world distract you from what God's going to ultimately do. Because God's got a plan. We just heard it just a minute ago. I mean, that was much greater than what I've read in some of the, some of the, uh, 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 the, the prophecies that are going to come to pass. God's going to show up in a great and mighty way. Amen. He's going to reveal His goodness. He's going to reveal his glory in a great and powerful way. I'm anticipating that. I'm wanting that, but I can't let what's going on around in the world distract me. You know, God's got a plan. And you know, God's never failed. How many of you know God's never failed? God has never failed. You know, those things that he has intended to do, he will get done. He plans on getting it done for you. Tell your neighbor he's going to get it done for me. But look at this. I, it's something that, that, that just jumped out at me when I was reading this this last time. Number one, I'm with you. Fear not, I'm with you. You don't have to be afraid. You know one of the names of God is Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is present. That means he'll never leave you or forsake you. He is always there. He is always with you. If God be for you, the scripture says, who can be against you? And we often say around here, Nobody. So don't be distracted. And then it says, I'm your God. Is he your God? Absolutely. Make him your God. Magnify him in every area of your life. Make sure that he's magnified. Then it says, I will strengthen you. Oh, our strength comes from the Lord. Our strength comes from the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord, the Bible says, shall what? Renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run and not be weary and they'll walk and not faint. Glory to God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. He'll help you. What's he going to help you do? What's he going to strengthen you? Why is he going to be your God? Because he wants to see these things he's put in your heart. This vision that he's asked you to write down, he wants to bring it to pass. God wants to see it happen in your life. He wouldn't have put it in your heart if he didn't it happen in your life i will uphold you that word uphold means i will hold i will hold up i will retain i will support i will keep it for you in other words god's already taken a hold of it for you it's a matter of you just receiving it from him so say with me god is with me my god will strengthen me my god will help me and my God will uphold me.